Hello again, Battlefield fans. DICE has recently unlocked the full 12-minute reveal of the Fault Line trailer. However, they're still keeping the producer commentary locked until Battlefield gets the 1 million likes on Facebook. Now, you may think that the trailer isn't really showing off anything new, but we do see some more small but interesting stuff. So let's recap, shall we? The year is 2014, and U.S. Marines, along with coalition forces, are implicated in pacification operations along the Iran-Iraq border. In Iraqi Kurdistan, engaging insurgent forces, increasingly organized in a paramilitary group known as the People's Liberation and Resistance, who have been sneaking across the border near Suleimania. We're playing as Staff Sergeant Black of the 1st Marine Recon Battalion, who arrives together with his squad at a staging area somewhere in town with an LAV-25. At the staging area, we can see Marines searching arrested civilians, and as the squad moves into the market, we can see two Marines escorting a captured PLR insurgent. You might already be familiar with the briefing scene if you followed previous Battlefield 3 trailers. Your squad is tasked with a search and rescue of a fellow Marine, namely Jackson, and his squad before they're found by PLR forces. Jackson's last known position was Spinza Meat Market, and they're in a bad fucking part of town. I need you to find our Marines and bring them back safe ASAP before the PLR find them. Move out. The Marines move swiftly around town, charging through back alleys and moving through schools and car service stations. By now, you might have noticed that the F-words are no longer censored as they were in the first Fault Line trailer. The language is quite colorful, to say the least, so don't expect that M rating to be changed to a T anytime soon. It's also good to see that DICE hasn't completely abandoned humor, as there still are some lines that will make you chuckle or maybe even laugh out loud. You ever ask yourself how this part of the world gets so fucked up all the time? I just work here, Dave. What is this? A school? Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting. They don't have schools where you come from. Give me a sip, Red! I'm up! I'm up! I'm up! I'm fucked up, but I'm up! One scene we didn't see so far is the scene in which the Marines wait in the shadows as some PLR forces pass by with a technical, similar to what you'll see later on during the big firefight at the walkway. As you cross the street and pass through the garage, your squad is ambushed by the PLR. As your squad opens fire and pops smoke, you drag your downed comrade to safety inside the garage. During this whole parking lot ambush scene, we can learn a few more interesting things. When you're taking fire and you get hit, you will twitch and that will make your aim go off target and that's probably how it will stay in multiplayer. It's most obvious after the player first reloads and moves behind a corner. Another thing we can see is that the grenades appear to be a selectable weapon, like in Battlefield 2. We can tell this because before the player throws the grenade, a small window appears on the HUD reading M67 frag grenade, and similar text appears when the player switches back to the Trijicon ACOG scope and flashlight equipped M4 carbine. When he equips the M4, we can also see what appears to be a list of the actions you can perform with the selected weapon. The M67 frag only had one action available, namely, throw. Obviously the role of a grenade being to arm it and throw it at the bad guy. The M4, however, has two actions available, cycle fire mode and toggle flashlight. We already knew that there will be an option to toggle different firing modes, as there's an indicator on the HUD above the ammo counter in the form of dots and chevrons, which show the current fire mode. And now we learn the flashlight will not automatically be toggled on or off depending on the lighting. The player has full control of it. We still don't know, though, if it will be an available attachment in multiplayer as well. Another hint that the grenade is a drawable or selectable weapon, instead of a one-button throw like in Bad Company 2 or Call of Duty games, is the fact that the player takes out another grenade before equipping his M4. And another thing we noticed is that DICE is cheating. Yes, the player had infinite ammo as he receives a full complement of ammunition as soon as he is left without bullets or grenades. This will also be noticeable during the walkway firefight scene. Now, another interesting thing is that Battlefield 3 supports tactical reloads, in addition to having a correct reload animation. When the player completely empties the gun, he will change mags and then pull the charging handle and be left with 30 bullets. 
However, when the player hasn't completely emptied the gun and leaves a bullet in the chamber, he gets 31 bullets, one of the bullets being left in the chamber. A heated debate is whether it is correct to pull the charging handle after reloading or use the bolt catch. Various branches of the military have different views on this, but one thing is for certain. In a situation like that, you wouldn't really bother thinking which is the correct option, according to your corresponding branch, but to get the gun ready to fire. When an enemy soldier fires an RPG at a car, the explosion blows you away and you land on your back. The animation is very well made and fairly believable, even if in real life, an explosion like that won't knock you back like that. In case you're wondering, the animation system used in Battlefield 3 is Ant, the same system which EA has used in its FIFA games. Another thing we haven't seen so far is the player's ability to vault over low obstacles, similar to what we can see in Call of Duty, only better. Soon after the player vaults over the fence, he opens fire, but now firing single shots. If you have played the new Medal of Honor's multiplayer, then you might hear some familiar voices during the firefight. The PLR is screaming the same things the Taliban are sometimes screaming in Medal of Honor. As of now, we don't know if that's just temporary or if it will stay this way. As the enemy falls back and your squad regroups, we get a taste of Frostbite 2's particle lighting, the sun glaring through the plume of smoke above the parking lot. After you regroup with your squad, you move up to a nearby rooftop to take out the sniper that injured your squad mate during the parking lot ambush. We get a taste of Battlefield 3's suppression effect as the sniper takes pot shots at you as you move from cover to cover in an attempt to find where the sniper is hiding. It has been hinted that the game's multiplayer will have a suppression effect similar to what we can see here. And then we fucking shoot it. Roger. Shit. Hug the wall. Black. Wait for it to get position. Don't bunch up. Keep moving. I'll cover you. And you hit him. Before you fire the AT4CS when you get up on your feet. A thing to be noted is that you take your hand off the handle to push yourself up from the ground and then grip it again as soon as you're up. Unimportant, but it proves that DICE does pay attention to details. Also, if you follow the trail of smoke the AT4 round leaves behind, you'll see that it slightly curves downward, giving us a hint that there will be bullet and rocket drop in the game as there was in Battlefield Bad Company 2. The impact the rocket has on the hotel is mind-boggling but it's one hell of a sight, even if it's not entirely realistic. Another thing DICE has fixed is the hotel sign in Arabic. In the early trailers, it wasn't spelled correctly. Again, DICE's ammo cheat is obvious as the player picks up another AT4, even if that was the only one he was supposed to have. After these events, we find out that the missing patrol has been located, but another problem intervenes. The Marines find a suspicious wire, which they believe is leading to an IED. Black follows the wire and indeed it leads to an explosive device in a basement filled with racks of artillery shells and pink teddy bears stuffed with more explosives. The IED is powered by what looks like a Duracell battery and appears to be triggered by a cell phone. Now we see the full fight scene which we have seen in the gameplay debut and get that wire cut trailers. Truly awesome animations during a very intense fight which ends with Sergeant Black prevailing over the PLR insurgent and defusing the bomb. next few scenes, we don't see anything new or special, just the firefight between the Marines and the PLR at the walkway and the awesome sight of the Little Bird firing its twin M134 miniguns. At the end, while the player is mowing down PLR forces with a PKT, we can once again witness the catastrophic effect of an earthquake that brings down a hotel on top of black, taking out a Little Bird in the meantime. We can then hear someone saying that there was a major earthquake in Iran that has caused major disruption to operations along the Iran-Iraq border. Obviously, it's the same quake that made the hotel collapse. After that, we again see the scenes we have seen in the My Life trailers. The city in flames, the Abrams tanks met with a hail of air-bursting ordnance, the Marines jumping off a building in a mountainous environment, the Sukhoi blowing past your F-16 jet. 
At the end of the trailer, DICE hasn't stated when they'll release the next trailer, as they did with all other previous trailers. But we're sure they have more up their sleeves, so stay tuned and give Battlefield the thumbs up on Facebook so we can unlock the developer commentary.